What's going on? It's the Deja Vu Show. You know up in here, we always have your favorite celebs stopping by. Today, we have two of my favorites. Y'all, when I tell you I was on my group chat, group chat, guess what? I'm going to interview Jasmine Guy and Kadeem Hardison. I really didn't put that. I put Whitley Gilbert and Dwayne Wayne. Okay? But anyway, they knew what I was talking about. Straight from a different world. The cast is celebrating 35 years. Welcome, you guys. How are you? Oh, we're good. We're good. I have a lot of energy. I'm sorry. Happy to so still be good. here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm but the the love is still there for you guys. I really thought it was 25 until this morning. <laughs> they kept saying 35. I was like, oh, I left a decade out. Yeah. Sis, I left it's a whole bunch of decades out. That. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't really feel that much different than I did. Right. I guess I thought I was going to be more mature, more gracious as I got older. I don't know. You still like to you still like to wild out and be crazy. Oh yes, I just do it in my living room now by myself. (laughs) Not on TikTok. No, 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 no. I don't. I mean, is that with the little short videos? That's like, the short videos. Like a ding, 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 ding. Exactly. Like that. No, you no, got I, dance moves. I forgot about that. You what? Yeah, no. I do a whole thing. I do um, um, Game of Thrones, Fire and Ice. I have a whole ballet to. Are you serious? <laughs> have you put it out yet? The, the, I want to see it. No, it's in my living room. <laughs> You, you should for real sleep over over if you want to see it. Okay, and then El Cantante, I'm turned on to Hector Laveau now because of that movie, so I pl- put that on. And yeah, I give myself dance concerts. I like it. I like it. And anyone who will <laughs> suffer me. <laughs> and Kadeem, what about you? How are you feeling now that it's 35 years since a different world? <clears throat> I'm uh, happy to, like she said, happy to be here. Uh, <laughs> happy that, that people are still getting inspired by it that there's still Absolutely. there's still a you know there's a void mm-hmm. so it's necessary and instead of just crying about what we ain't got they go well shoot we can go back to that and, and we've gone and people, back and yeah. gone back and, and now on saturday kids. september 24th it's going to be the exact date that it launched back in 1987 tv one's going to do an entire marathon yeah. oh my god all six seasons <laughs> all six seasons i love that it's in order Right. Because in the reruns, it hops from season four to season two, and there is a chronology mm-hmm. that makes it make more sense, mm-hmm. you know, especially between our relationship because it's in and out. And mm-hmm. when you watch it out of order, you don't see the growth. Right. And that is a crucial time in people's lives at 18 to 22. Absolutely. You know, we, you really change. Yeah. And I, I just like that they're showing it in order. Yeah. Tell us about when you guys first heard about the opportunity and who did you hear it from? Was it your agent? Was it a friend? Hey, they're going to have these auditions about this new spinoff show from the Cosby's. What was the deal? Yeah, um, I got a call from my agent. I had come to California. I had come to California uh, after doing school days where Mm -hmm. I met Jasmine Mm -hmm. and and Daryl Bell. And and a what bunch a time of to be girls. alive! And a, bu- <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of other girls for real. <laughs> and um, so that was my first kind of introduction to HBCU and that whole world. Mm-hmm. I had no idea, being from New York, from Brooklyn, we didn't know nothing about black colleges. Mm-hmm. So then I get to California and I'm hanging out and uh, and I go visit Lisa who's doing the spinoff right. uh, before I get cast. And and I watch it, and it's it's dragging a little bit and, and seems like it's not really kind of like true to what I just experienced. Mm-hmm. And then two weeks later, I get a call that they're going to be looking for some new characters. And I go, yeah, yeah, you sure should be looking for something. So wait a minute. They had already a, a pilot, a mock-up or something? They, they had four episodes. Yeah, done. they had already started... Uh, filming before we got on a different world. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. They added us. Four episodes. We were inserts. Yeah. No. And, and then they went and casted us. After, on the, like, fir- the wait, first. Wait, I'm, I'm trying to remember the first episode. No, no, no. They put us in. Oh, I was about to say because yeah, like, I, were, I'm I like, was, I could have sworn. I, I opened the show. Right. Looking so, flip up glasses, talking exactly. to Exactly. But they had but already they had already filmed, filmed five, pot- four or five four episodes, episodes before we were cast. Yeah. 35 years later, we're getting us- the tea. I yeah. never knew this. <laughs> yeah, and then they inserted us in. They just shot separate scenes. They added a scene for me and Lisa, that scene where we meet for the first time, and then they cut it into what they had already had. Did you tell her, like, yo, y'all need to do something else with this? No. <laughs> no, she was she was a, a such a bright light, and mm-hmm. I was so um, 
thankful for the relationship we had, like our friendship. Right. I couldn't. I couldn't say. Yo, Plus, you went to a right. taping. Yeah. He oh, you were see, at the taping. He went yeah, to the yeah. taping of the episode they were filming. Yeah, yeah. That's what. That's I went why and it saw. took so long. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Because I, I had worked with her on Cosby. Yeah. And we started at seven thirty, and we were on our way home by nine fifteen, nine thirty. Oh, they had it working like clockwork, huh? So I get here and I come to watch her and see, hey, listen at that. And one o'clock in the morning, we're still sitting there in the audience, like doing wow, things over and over. I remember those days like, of one in the morning, like why, why are we, we doing here? this again? Yeah, what's going on? So I was like, it's not it, gonna get any funnier. Yeah, I don't know if I can. <laughs> I don't know how many times <laughs> yeah. we can do it, but it's only getting worse. They yeah. already heard the joke, you know. Yeah, That's crazy. The audience hears the joke, and then it's not funny. It's it's less funny. Right. The more times you do it. That's that first year kind of. You know, shows have to find their their mm -hmm. footing. Mm -hmm. And um, I he had already done an episode of Cosby. Mm -hmm. I had already auditioned for Cosby. No, I did. I, yeah. And then I auditioned for A Different World for Jaleesa. Really? Yeah, obviously I did not get that. <laughs> obviously. obviously. So the third time when I went in, I said, I'm not, there's something not connecting. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pretend I'm somebody totally different. Mm -hmm. What I have to lose? going to act. And it worked. going to act, girl. I'm just going to go in there and talk <laughs> like this. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Let me tell you. I thought it was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But it worked. And but he had my everybody started doing laughing. it. I said, I said, I read it the, the sides of my regular voice. And I said, is it funny? She said, you know, it's a sitcom. It's, you know, TV. I said, mommy, I have to be funny. I said, would it be funnier if I did it like Miss Panker? That was my third grade teacher. Mm -hmm. And she started laughing. But I didn't think, I didn't. I didn't know I would get the part. I didn't know I have to talk like that for six more years. <laughs> Did you get stuck talking like that even later? Mm -hmm. Were you getting stuck talking like that even later with the accent? Did you? Would you feel yourself pop into it? Oh hell no! no. no the no, consciously. No. I, no. Yeah, that was work. It's it's a turn that on. Was, yeah, and in the morning I'd be like, oh, I really don't feel yeah. like going up there right now. It was higher. Yeah. It was nasal. It was. Yeah. Yeah, I had to get voice lessons during that. Period. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, because to the way I have vocals? to pitch it, it's not my natural voice. You right. Know, it's like back in the back of my throat and through my nose. Mm -hmm. And then over and over, you know, yeah, no, I never in my natural state pop into that. Mm -hmm. no. Now it might turn into a Jamaican because she have more power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love like it. Like the powerful women. Yeah, I want I didn't see Whitley as a powerful woman. I I saw her growing into her power. Exactly. But like you said, it grew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Each scene, each season. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what about you all when you got there, you're on the set, you're working, and then the shift happens that second season. What did you feel that second season when, when Debbie Allen came in? I was thrilled. I was thrilled. I knew Debbie. Um, um, I had gone to see Debbie on Broadway. Um, my mother took me to plays. The legendary <clears throat> Beth Ann Hardison. Yes, my mama. What'd you see, Sweet Charity? I think it's Sweet or Charity. West Side? I think it was Sweet Charity. Okay. So after the show, they were friends. So I went back to Debbie's house, apartment, mm -hmm. and she had a waterbed. And I must have been. I must <laughs> what have are you been, doing in Miss Debbie's bedroom? I must have been 12, mm -hmm. or something like that. <laughs> and I was like, Oh my God, that was my dream. When I moved to LA, the first thing I did was buy a waterbed. Wow, I didn't um, know this yeah, story. Yeah. So I went and she, I said, can I go? And then she was like, yeah, honey, go ahead. <laughs> and I went and I was on the waterbed. All, they were having a party out in the living room. I was just on the waterbed and I was like, this is man, once I get some money, I swear to God. So when I saw Debbie, when she came on as producer, I was like, hey, nice to see you again. Da, 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 da. She's like, oh, God. I was like, you remember me? And she was like, yeah, honey, I saw you just the other day. And I was like, no, no. I'm Kadeem, like, from the waterbed. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, what? I was like, you had a waterbed. And she was like, oh, my God, your mother is Beth. <gasps> yeah. That's so it was, crazy. it was really kind of, I was thrilled that Debbie was there. I knew that we were going to have <clears throat> a much more authentic telling mm -hmm. of HBCUs because of who she is, where she went to school and, and all of that. And that things were going to change. And then it had a chance to be a, a really good show instead of just a show. 
Absolutely. And she gave us a voice as actors. That uh, first mm -hmm. season, mm -hmm. it, it was different. It was just do what we tell you. Mm -hmm. We had no input. Yeah. Now, why you would hire funny people to do a comedy and not listen to them? Mm -hmm. And then we, it just was very, it wasn't a uh, creatively enjoyable experience. I'll just put it like that. Yeah. Really? Not the first season. Not the first season. I mean, Second it did season. look a little, it, it was like, okay, but. Because you got people telling you to do something and you know it the truth. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel right. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I remember was the entire cast on that same note. vibe? Like, okay, this this isn't really the direction we should be going in? No, I didn't know. No. I mean, I was just trying to hold on to my job. Yeah. Talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, did, I, I mean, we hired us late. They yeah. were already bonded. Yeah. We come in and we know we have to be funny. Yep. <laughs> really. Turn it up. Turn that energy you up. You know, up, yeah. up, I had up. never done a, a, a TV show, so there was a lot of just, okay, we got six, we got six episodes or seven, make right? It, make it pop. Yeah, and there was a lot of change in the cast. It was tense to me. Yeah. Yeah. It was intense yeah. and tense. Yeah, but once Debbie came, she opened the floor, which yeah. was never a thing. Right. It was a writer's camp and it was an actor's camp. And the actors pretty much went home and was like, fucking writers. <laughs> writing that bullshit. <laughs> and the actors went home. I mean, writers went home and went, fucking actors. They never say the shit right. They never want to commit to the... <laughs> they just say it the way we wrote it. Right. And, and Debbie comes and then she says, there's no more of that. At the end of every run through, actors... You talk to the writers about how you feel instead of them going off into a room and then talking about us. Writers, you can respond back. And that was every run through for the every table read and run through for the rest of the series. Was, and the respect and yeah. the camaraderie that yeah. came from that was a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, I had great respect for the writers. Mm -hmm. um, but they also respected us and weren't mm -hmm. treating us like, you know, little... Uh, mm -hmm. Organ grinding monkeys. <laughs> yeah, once they hear back from you know, us, it's like, right? They get we do have good things to say. Yeah, not yeah, just of course, because you guys are actually living that and, and in that area. Yeah, that we may have a good idea every now yeah. and then. Yeah, every yeah. now and then, it, yeah. not to overdo it, because some actors just they right. they always got something to say. It's like, yo, <laughs> right. just do it first. Just try it. Yes. See if right. you can yeah. do it first. And if it's still there's stickiness or you have a better line or something, mm -hmm. but not just to constantly hear yourself talk. I think that helped a lot. And Debbie's authenticity came from, you know, she went to Howard. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Nobody on the staff had gone to a black school they hadn't even visited. This is what I don't she understand. I don't understand Spelman how they even Hampton. started the show and didn't have they said anybody. If we write a show and make and black people say the lines, it then becomes a black show. That's not true. There's a cultural difference Absolutely. in going to an HBCU and then going to a, you know, a big white university. So exactly. if you don't even care enough to go sit into the classes at Spelman mm -hmm. that are, look at the curriculum, listen to the Glee Club, mm -hmm. watch a step show. I mean, it, it feeds you at writing. least care mm -hmm. enough to yeah. look. Yeah, it feeds you your know, writing. You know, what I don't understand, and I don't, I don't believe that, you know, if you're white, you can't write a black show, but care enough to do the research. Right, learn the culture. Yeah. As you would if you were writing a movie set in the 1890s. Absolutely. Bank, you were going to do your research. Heist. If you're writing a bank heist. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have to some... be a robber. <laughs> <laughs> do your research. Yeah. I love it. All right. So you guys, when you said you had input, did you have any input in some of the, the serious topics? Because you all covered all kinds of things that really were relevant and relatable. Even then, even today, when you look at the reruns, you're like, wow, y'all were really breaking down stuff and, and, and the guest appearances. Did you have any input in that? Or you say, oh, we should get such and such and such, or we should talk about dot, dot, dot. We didn't need to. I no, didn't. The, you actually did, because oh. the episode you wrote about our marital problems, Oh yeah. it seems like a small thing, but it's real. Yes. And that was you. Yeah, I wrote that, yeah. Yeah. Because Willie and Dwayne got married, and um, they weren't having as much intercourse as they as she thought. And she thought it was her. Mm -hmm. And she tries all these things that she sees in Cosmo, you mm -hmm. know, going to the pit, 
With my fur coat on and no There's clothes. No clothes underneath. <laughs> my students everywhere. <laughs> like, oh, child. <laughs> Meanwhile, his storyline is that he is stressed. Mm -hmm. Whitley costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. He's working two jobs. Mm -hmm. He, you know, marriage isn't what he thought it would be either. Mm -hmm. So, we, yeah, that was a good episode because they allowed us to be grown, too. You. Well, yeah. You we were the only grown one? No, 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 I'm saying. <laughs> well, she wrote, like, yeah. didn't have input into the storylines. Yeah. And some of the giant ones and the ones that stand out, like AIDS and, and, and apartheid, maybe not. Mm -hmm. But some of the more real ones, people related, like, you could relate to instantly. Like, right. On a personal level, me and my wife ain't doing like we're supposed to be doing. She tackled that. Mm -hmm. She brought that to the forefront. Which, you know, it seems like a small one, but I promise you, it adds to the lore of the couple and their ups and downs and how they made it. And for some reason, he broke up her wedding. And Listen, that, listen, that episode, listen, baby, listen. When, whenever it airs now, I still watch it. I'll be on a treadmill. <laughs> Different worlds are okay, let's go. What are we doing? We're doing, okay, he's about to come in and break up the whole wedding and everything. And then, of course, you have the, the part twos and all these things, yeah. the clinchers. But I can remember waiting and trying to catch every episode. You know, we had church on Thursday, so I had to try and see, how can I stay home from church just this time? Because I know different worlds coming on. It's just, it was that impactful for me and my my friends. And, and because we saw you all, we wanted to go to HBCUs. Yeah. And I'm wondering now, do you think that still had impact even to this day about attending HBCUs from watching you guys nowadays? The rerun? I, I don't know about now because most of the people who who uh, come to me and say this is the effect are graduate. They, they've all mm -hmm. have, you know, they're in their 40s. So so I haven't seen as much of a younger 18, 19, 20-year-olds coming to me saying, yo, I've, I've seen that show. I want to go to that kind of school. I Would, haven't seen this as much. You know, they have a class about a different world at Spelman. Excuse yeah. me? Yeah, really? they, I, um, I met the teacher in the grocery store and she wanted to know if I would come and talk to the class. And I was just so impressed. Basically taking the issues from the show, using the show as a guide. And I, I heard their very smart opinions, but they took issue with that wedding show. Did they? Yeah. Of course. It wasn't the romantic. They did, they thought it was it was toxic. it was toxic, rude. How dare he do that the night before you get married? You know, I was like, oh my god, you guys are deep. Everybody <laughs> loves that corny ass yeah. wedding. Show. I think it's a different generation. It's a different. It's a different world. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Like yeah. seriously, yeah. they look at different things. Even songs. I'll hear some of my Gen Zs talk about that song was toxic. I'm like, that was our love song. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> You were created yeah. on that song. Right. <laughs> you wouldn't be here yeah. if it wasn't for this song. Talk about it. Yeah. Talk now, about I, it. I, I had problems with the wedding show just doing it myself. <laughs> so I could imagine if the next generation comes and gets to look back at all the things they could enjoy or, and take from it mm -hmm. and then get to that and go, oh, wait a minute. That's how I felt. So I could easily understand how to get that. Like, mm -hmm. that home. And I've seen, I've seen blog posts where... Dwayne and Whitley are not couple goals. They are toxic. He was da da da. He you know what? Really? Y what y'all not gonna yeah. do is mess up my youth. Oh okay. my goodness! Yeah. These think pieces. <laughs> girls now are mad at Dwayne. Like he was not the Prince Charming that he was portrayed as or thought to be back in those days because of you know the anger and all the shit that. Wow. Yeah. It's it's truly a different world. This is but why I don't read social media. Because <laughs> <laughs> I get my feelings hurt. I'm good. No, yeah. we still love it. Thank it still has a place hearing, in our heart. But I yeah. don't want to read know. all of the, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. The you commentary. never know what you're going to come across. Yeah. I was so interested because I had my yes. feelings that were similar and that read somebody say that I was like, And to articulate okay. in a way that, yes. yeah. And not even specific. my perspective. Right. My yeah, perspective is I was, man yeah. different. These are women, younger women going, uh-uh, hold on. Mm -hmm. like, but I like that the show, you know, generates conversation. That yeah. part. That and lets you know you it still thinking. resonates. Yes. Because there are, there are a lot of episodes that I felt, I'm glad this is a family show because how are you going to mm -hmm. talk about date rape to a 10-year-old? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
They haven't even done anything, and now you're going to say, and when you Be start careful. dating, mm-hmm. <laughs> watch out for this. You know, how are you going to bring up AIDS? How are you mm-hmm. going to bring up um, the, the racism um, mm-hmm. when, the when y'all got pregnancy. called the N word? Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, teen pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, um, Gina and the. Oh, when wow. she got hit. The, uh, yeah, the. With the, um, the, the yeah, DJ. the rapper. Yeah, the MC. <laughs> yep. Wow, yeah. I forgot about that one. Yeah. I know, <laughs> yeah. and the and the the beauty is to make sure it's still mm-hmm. funny in there. Mm-hmm. But life is like that. Absolutely, you can be yeah. at a funeral and start laughing at something. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean you're not sad. Right. Yeah, I started laughing I, I at a funeral. That one. I so I writers, directors, <laughs> I he wrote and directed it. I forgot I that. Forgot. You remember was, that show? Like, it was really episode. good. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Oh wait, I had to, I was, yeah. Yes. I had to find an actor to play him and Yeah. Yeah. And I had to write all weekend with Mookie. We was writing. See? Yeah. See? Yeah. You got to stretch your muscles there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. So I know I know they're giving me the look like, okay, we got to wrap it up. I, I could talk to y'all for hours. And I will still be talking to you in my head um, as we watch the marathon <laughs> on Saturday, September 24th on TV One. You both have Uncensored coming out. Talk to us about that. Wow. You got one, too, coming out? Yeah, I did one, too. I didn't know yeah. you did. Mine's, I, know I don't know when mine's coming out, but yours mine's is Sunday. Mine's coming out Sunday. Mm-hmm. Mine is the premiere. And what will we find out? I, 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 I have a thing. I don't watch me for a good 10, 15, 20 years. Mm. So I'll do something, and then I'll just let it be, and then I'll go visit it later. So what did I say? I said a lot. You spilled some tea? They oh, had shit, us talking absolutely. so much. I don't know yeah, what I was they're going to use. Yeah, hours. <laughs> so they got you really of, comfortable. Talking, yeah, talking about... The chair wasn't that comfortable, but yeah. <laughs> they had me talking about myself for... Hours. Wow. So uh, there's a lot. I, I really wish I could because I don't, and I we, probably won't yeah, watch. Yeah, we don't know how they're going to edit it, yeah. but they did a very thorough yeah. six-hour kind yeah. of interview. So Good we don't loud. Know. Yeah. yeah, covering personal, yeah. Yeah. career, yeah. you know, yeah. very thorough. How I grew up. I think I remember talking about how I grew up in, in that part. That, that'll be a, a revelation for some. Okay. Well, we can't wait to watch it this Sunday. Jasmine, we'll look out for yours. So we have a Kadeem weekend. <laughs> we got Kadeem yes. all day Saturday all day and Saturday. And on Sunday. What? On Sunday. Yes, thank And you. what are you all working on now? What other projects can we watch you on? I know. I'm on this show called Harlem. It is amazing. Do you like it? You're playing it? the mama. Yes. yes. And I'm also in a movie called The Lady Makers, and it's also on Amazon. Nice. Nice. I'm doing a show called Moonhaven, and we're going back to Ireland, to the moon, to do season two, probably in March. Nice. Yeah, Moonhaven okay. is on AMC+. Plus. Okay. And y'all film in Ireland? Yeah. The scenery's got to be amazing. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's okay, green. Everything is green it. in Ireland. Definitely. It's, it's, that doesn't uh, look like the moon, though. Why do y'all have to go to Ireland? Um, We've terraformed the moon to look like a utopia. That mm-hmm. would, what oh. Earth would be. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna maybe I'll do that this weekend In when the I'm celebrating weekend. your other one. <laughs> after after uh, unscripted, uh, <laughs> uncensored. You What's go it right called? In... Moon what? Moonhaven. Moonhaven. Okay, yeah. on AMC. Okay. On AMC, AMC and you're on Harlem. And I'm on, on Amazon, Amazon Prime. Yeah. Love it. We love you guys so much. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, Kadeem, for stopping by. Y'all should come back more often, and we can do a whole podcast kind of deal. Okay. We'll talk about it off scene. Yeah, anyway, yeah. <laughs> this is how we do on the Deja Vu show. You know you can watch it. A different world.